Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for the uh, invitation. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, briefly present uh, one of my uh, research topics, which is basically the design of new polymers uh, for drug delivery uh, application. Yeah. All right. So uh, as you know, in the field of um, traditional chemotherapy, uh, we can use a broad range of different anti-cancer drugs. But the problem is, when you inject them uh, to the patients, basically they will diffuse everywhere uh, in the body. So we will induce basically um, toxic effects and you will obtain a really poor uh, treatment efficacy. So the idea is basically to encapsulate or to incorporate those drugs into nanoparticulate system, which are basically on a scale system, like nanoparticles, this could be liposomes, polymer nanoparticles, uh, and so on. And uh, thanks to this, uh, we'll work on the, uh, the, the, the chemistry, surface chemistry of those particles and of their properties, basically to uh, be able to incorporate those particles into the uh, tumor sites, uh, for instance. So in that way, you will obtain uh, basically a, a better bioavailability of the drugs. You will uh, decrease the toxicity to the whole body and you will increase the uh, efficacy. So here I just represent uh, the uh, main features of one of the systems we are working on, which are polymer nanoparticles for drug delivery. <coughs> so basically, uh, to allow safe administration, those particles are made from biodegradable or at least biocompatible polymers in which the drug is uh, physically encapsulated, so physically entrapped uh, to, to, to be uh, released afterwards. So if you want to escape the immune system response, uh, you can decorate the surface of those particles with some allophilic and flexible polymers, like protein glycol or polysaccharides. In that case, you will basically have a long circulation time into the body, so you can increase your chance to enter into uh, tumors and to avoid to end up in the liver very quickly. And then, if you want to uh, increase the therapeutic efficacy uh, of your treatments, you can perform what is called active targeting. Basically, you will decorate or surface functionalize the surface of your particles with some ligands, some specific ligands that can be recognized by a certain cells, like cancer cells, because those cells have uh, an express receptor. So if you use the good ligands, those particles will be able to recognize uh, those, uh, those cancer cells and uh, be accumulated uh, further into the tumors. The problem is that even though there are some uh, uh, clinical trials, some, some success in this field, there are some important limitations that I listed here. Uh, the first one is the burst release, which is basically the quick release of a significant fraction of the drug, which is not encapsulated deep to the core of the particles, but only surface absorbed. And this could induce some toxicity because anti-cancer drugs are really toxic. Uh, second problem is the uh, encapsulation of polysomal drugs into the polymer matrix. So you will have to use some uh, organic solvents. Uh, you may have to face some crystallization issues. This could induce also uh, corridor instability and also toxic effects. And last but not least, uh, usually you have really poor drug loading. It means that you have to inject a lot of nanoparticles to uh, observe a therapeutic effect, and this could also induce some uh, toxicity. So to tackle those issues, uh, you can use different uh, approaches. Uh, one of them is the pro-drug approach. So what is pro-drug? It's basically uh, a chemical modification of a drug, and this could be applied to polymers. And this is one of the strategies we're working on, which is called the drug initiated approach. Basically, the idea is to take a drug and to link a drug to what is called an initiating moiety. And from this initiating moiety, we will be able to grow a small uh, polymer chain in a controlled fashion because we'll use some specific polymerization method, like controllable polymerizations, for instance. And you end up with a really simple conjugate which is basically one drug molecule attached at the extremity of a polymer chain. And this approach is quite interesting because, because the drug is linked to the polymer, so you have an inverse release. The linkage between the drug and the polymer has to be cleared before the drug gets active again. And you can have access to a different kind of uh, polymer uh, drug conjugate. So if the conjugate is amphiphilic, you can uh, not precipitate it to obtain drug polymer nanoparticles. You can also incorporate those polyoprol drugs into more traditional drug delivery systems like liposome or traditional uh, polyester particles, for instance. And if the conjugate is water soluble, you can use them and inject them uh, as they are. So the method is quite simple. The structure is really simple. You have one drug molecule attached to a polymer chain, a short polymer chain. 
uh, there is only a few things that, uh, which, is which are required. The method is quite flexible because you can tune the chain length because we use control recognition. You can tune the chain length and control the chain length. And the shorter the chain length, the higher the drug loading is. So it's quite interesting from that point of view. And the method is also quite versatile because you can play with the nature of the drug and the nature uh, of the polymer. And I will give you uh, a few examples. All right, so this is the first example we uh, uh, have been reported. So basically, we start from gemstabine, which is a hydrophilic uh, anti-cancer drug, which is used in the clinic. And we linked gemstabine to this uh, acoxyamine, which is a molecule that will initiate the control polarization through uh, natural uh, polarization. So in that case, we obtain a gemstabine acoxyamine initiator, and then we polymerize isoprene uh, to obtain a gemstabine polyisoprene uh, conjugate. So we use isoprene to mimic natural polyisoprenoids. And after the synthesis, as you see, is really simple. We just then precipitate this conjugate to obtain, to obtain drug uh, polymer, prodrug uh, nanoparticles, as you can see here. So it's only three steps, 50% of our yield, which is quite uh, simple and quite efficient. We obtain well-defined uh, James Stabil polyisoprene conjugate. As you can see here, we were able to tune the molecular weight, we obtain a quite decent control, and we obtain nanoparticles in the uh, 130, 160 nanometer range, which is well adapted to drug delivery. And as you can see here, because we targeted really low molecular weight, like uh, from 400 uh, to 2.5 uh, kilodalton, we basically obtain really high drug loading, so minimum 10% to uh, up to more than 30%, which is really high in the drug delivery field. Okay, so then we move to in vitro anticus activity, it was working, and then we move to in vivo anticus activity. So we basically injected some uh, tumor to the mice, and then we perform different kind of treatments. So these are saline 0.9%, which is basically the mice. We also treat the mice with a free drug, a free gemstabine at 7 mg per kilo body weight. And then we also in injected uh, gemstabine polyisoprene conjugate of two different molecular weights, and we also injected the proton and particles. And basically, what you can see here, we observe basically the evolution of the tumor volume with time. All the control experiments uh, gave the same trend, so kind of rapid growth of the tumor. And with our uh, polymer prodrug and the particles, we reduced the tumor growth quite significantly. Uh, and as you can see here, um, when we injected the free drug to the mice, the mice start to uh, lose some weight, which indicated that uh, the treatment is quite toxic. But if we administered our prodrug and particles, mice uh, uh, had a constant weight. So it means that the, our treatment was not toxic to the mice, but was only toxic to uh, the cancer cells. So this was the first uh, example. So we wanted to see whether this method was adaptable to other kind of drugs. So we then switched to platinum, which is another uh, anti-cancer drug, it's also hydrophilic. And then we tried to derivatize platinum through uh, its uh, amine group. It was not working because its amine was not uh, reactive enough. So we wanted to uh, then switch to this uh, secondary uh, hydroxy group to so protect the primary hydroxy group. And then we link uh, still our hydroxy amine to the secondary uh, hydroxy group. And then we perform the provisation of isoprene to NMP to obtain clanamine for the isoprene conjugate. But then we realized that uh, because of this synthetic approach, the link between the drug and the polymer was an ester with a metal group, which is quite bulky. And we are not confident that uh, this ester group were, uh, would be likely enough to induce a really rapid and efficient drug release. So we synthesized uh, a second conjugate uh, by changing the nature uh, of the linker. So as you can see here, we end up with this kind of drug, hypoxamine, the glycamine with uh, diglycolate linker to separate the drug uh, from the hypoxamine. In that case, you have a really more labeled ester group and the linker here, which is really labeled and will uh, hopefully induce a rapid and efficient drug release. And then we promise isoprene to obtain this conjugate. So two different conjugate, glycamine for the isoprene with the ester methylated here, and glycamine diglycolate for the uh, isoprene. So then we move to in vitro anti-cancer activity. And then we analyze uh, the cell ability uh, as a function of concentration from the first uh, kind of nanoparticles. So nanoparticles made from this cannabis uh, for the isoprene with the methylated uh, ester group as a link. As you can see here, this is the toxicity of the free cannabis. So cannabis was able to kill uh, almost all of the cells. 
But if we incubated those, uh, our particles with the, the, the cancer cells, there was no toxicity. So it means that cannabin was not released from this uh, conjugate. So it means that this linker was not labeled enough. And as we expected, because we use a really linker here between the drug and the polymer, we are able, in that case, to kill most of the cancer cells because we are able to induce a really rapid and efficient uh, drug release from this, uh, this conjugate. Okay, so it was working with two different hydrophilic drugs. So the question, uh, next question was, does it work with hydrophobic drug? So as a, a, a good candidate, we use Pachytaxel, which is a really hydrophobic anti-cancer drug. Uh, Pachytaxel is used in the clinic quite, quite uh, massively at the moment. <coughs> so um, because it's hydrophobic, we wanted to see whether uh, this could form nanoparticles uh, following our previous strategy. So taking Pachytaxel and growing hydrophobic polyisotope chain out of it. So this is the first strategy we investigated. We are expecting that uh, surfactant would be required at some point. Um, so this was the first strategy we investigated. And then, as an opposite strategy, we want to see whether we could grow hydrophilic polymer out of the hydrophobic bad cell, to so have the uh, kind of, uh, um, to have something amphiphilic. Uh, and to obtain something like this, with a core formed mainly by the bad cell molecules, surrounded by some hydrophilic uh, shell. So we investigate two different strategies, and this is the chemistry we use. So we start from Bacitaxel, and then for the first strategy, we link this alkoxamine, uh, uh, linked to the diglycolate linker uh, to it. So we derivatize Bacitaxel through uh, its secondary hydroxy group. So we end up with this structure, and then we premise isoprene uh, out of it to obtain Bacitaxel diglycolate poly uh, isoprene, and hopefully to obtain another particle. For the other strategy, then we use raft transition techniques because raft is really efficient to polymerize the percolate. So we um, linked Pactaxel to this raft agent uh, that bear the uh, diglycolate linker, so we end up with these molecules. And then we polymerize by raft peg metacolate, so it's a metacolate monomer with pending uh, peg chain, really small peg chains. And so we end up with this conjugate, Pactaxel diglycolate uh, polypeg metacolate. So the idea was to obtain those kind of nanoparticles by another precipitation in the water. All right, so these are the results. Uh, so we're really surprised that those conjugates, they are all hydrophobic. Bactaxel is hydrophobic, uncharged, and polymer is polyisoprene, so hydrophobic. By uh, really standard nanoprecipitation, uh, we obtain nanoparticles, really stable nanoparticles, and uh, not really dispersed, uh, and, and really stable over time in different kind of conditions, either in water, in PBS, or in salvage medium. So I'm still investigating why. Uh, we think it's due to the really negative uh, zeta potential that stabilizes efficiently the particles, but we're seeing basically why those particles exhibit really negative uh, zeta potential. Uh, anyway, those particles were really stable, and the other particles, Pachytaxel, Polypachytaculate, were also stable. That was less surprising because we have uh, the peg uh, surrounding that stabilize the uh, nervous samples. So drug loading were uh, varied from here 11 to 15 in the case of uh, pectaculate, in the case of polyisoprene from 20 to more than 30 percent. And uh, the control was okay, as you can see here, and, and, and diameters were ranging from 200, more than 200, to 110 nanometers. So in a good range for uh, drug delivery. So then we investigated uh, the, uh, the anti-cancer activity of these two families of nanoparticles on two different cancer cells. And we're quite happy to see that. Uh, here in gray, it is the uh, uh, anti-cancer activity of the free drug, so the free bactic cell in all figures here. And here in colors, these are the anti-cancer activity of our particles. So from P1 to P5, you increase the molecular weight. So basically, if you increase the molecular weight, you increase the anti-cancer activity. So we are investigating why we obtain such a trend. This may be due to the um, let's say the surface uh, of the particles, because if we increase the molecular weight, the surface maybe has less peptaxel uh, um, on the surroundings, so perhaps uh, the particles interact differently with the proteins and, and, and gives a different cell uptake. So we're still investigating why we have such a strain, but it's working with this cell line and the other cell line. In the case of uh, peptaxel, polypeptaculate kind of particles, we obtain really efficient anti activity mm -hmm. of the similar uh, order of magnitude that uh, the free back tech cell. So it's really, uh, really efficient. And the last example I would like to, to, to show you is that it's also working with uh, other molecules. 
So I want to see whether it's working with a Fresen probe uh, to prepare some Fresen and particles for drug delivery. So it's working with uh, naphthalamide, so we use naph naphthalamide, which has a really interesting property. It, it exhibits some aggregation-induced emission properties. It means that it's fluorescent when it's aggregated, and it's not fluorescent or poorly fluorescent when it's diluted. So we link naphthalamide to this alpha-theamine, and then we perform the promisimicization of isoprene to obtain naphthalamide polyisoprene conjugate, and then we co precipitated this conjugate with a clanabine polyisoprene conjugate to obtain mixed nanoparticles that comprise the drug and the fluorescent group. So particles were still uh, toxic to cancer cells, and we're also happy to see that we could uh, really follow the, uh, the, the fate of our particles. We, we did some protocol imaging uh, macroscopy, and you can see here that our particles, if you, we merge all the signal, uh, end up in the, uh, the lysosomes. So we can really follow quite precisely uh, the fate of our particles uh, this way. Okay, so I'm done. So I just wanted to illustrate a strategy we're working on to prepare quite efficient uh, polymer proton particles. We can change the nature of the drug, as I show you. We can use different kind of polymer. I don't have time to present all the polymer we use. We use also uh, polyspolymer acolyte and also some degradable uh, vinyl uh, polymers. We use different kind of provision methods, like RAF and NMP. We could uh, change the nature of the linker between the drug and the polymer, and we could also apply this approach to imaging agents. So it's quite a versatile approach uh, we are working on uh, at the moment. Okay, so these are the people working with us. Uh, uh, highlight uh, the, the main contributors, also all the collaborators, and, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Dr. Nicholas.